Every Thomas movie is the same. No, really, I'm serious. So in mythology, there's this theory that every story ever created follows a basic formula. This story is known as the hero's journey. It's a story that has been told a thousand times. Now, there are many different variants of the hero's journey. There's Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, there's the Christopher Voigler's hero's journey, and there's even Dan Harmon's story circle. But for the purposes of this video, I made my own hero's journey, the Thomas Theorist hero's journey. And I want to apply it to the main movies of Thomas and see how accurate the movie follows the journey. This is just a fun thought exercise to see how well these specials follow this journey. You by no means have to take any of this seriously, so please, take this video with a pinch of salt. So with all that out of the way, I thought what a better movie to start off with than with the movie with Hero in the title. So, this is the hero's journey of Hero of the Rails. So Hero of the Rails starts off in the known world. The known world is represented by Sodor. This is essentially the status quo of the character, a place that we are all familiar with and what they know. Now, the next step is the supernatural aid. The aid can often be the inciting incident that kicks off the story, like a crash or a landslide. Here, it's represented by Spencer coming to the island and annoying the engines. The next step is the call to adventure, where based on the supernatural aid, the character gets a call to go into the unknown world. The call to adventure is when Spencer challenges Thomas to a race. Thomas accepts the call, and so he races Spencer. But during the race, Thomas loses control of the trucks and ends up in an unfamiliar forest. This is the next step. Thomas goes into the unknown forest, representing the unknown world. Now once in there, there's usually three things that a hero finds. There's the test, there's the mentor, and there's the foe. In the case of Hero of the Rails, Thomas finds Hero, the character who represents the mentor character. Often the mentor will be an older and wiser character, or at the very least will have more experience in this unknown world. In this case, that's Hero. So Thomas takes it upon himself to repair Hero whilst keeping it secret from the other. That's the test that Thomas has to go through. However, this becomes even more harder to rebuild him when Spencer is getting ever closer to the truth. And the foe that Thomas and Hero have to deal with is, well, pretty obviously Spencer. <laughs> Thomas tries to balance fixing Hero by himself, but eventually he has the revelation that he has to tell the others. This is where Thomas has his revelation in the story, and it is his ultimate arc of the movie. The next segment is treasure. Earlier, Percy hides his mail trucks, and this became the treasure. The treasure is often something that a protagonist needs in a story to win. Think like Lady in Magic Railroad, or the Joby Wood in Misty Island, or hell, the literal treasure in Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. In this case, the treasure is Percy's mail trucks. Eventually, Spencer finds Hero's hideout, and Hero has to leave for the first time where we get this chase scene of Spencer and the treasure, represented by the mail trucks. This is the part of the story I'm going to call the Let's Go segment of the film, where a big chase happens with the characters. Since Hero doesn't have the last part he needs to steam, eventually he breaks down. This is the part of the story that we call the failure. It's very common in myths that the mentor will die around this point or have a near-death experience, which is pretty much what happens here with Hero. Thomas realizes that he can no longer save Hero, and so he goes to the Fat Controller. And this is where Thomas redeems himself as a character. In the first act, he wants to fix Hero all by himself, in the second act, he told the other engines about him, and in the third act, he finally tells the Fat Controller about it, and his full arc as a character is complete. The Fat Controller has Hero repaired and returns to the known world, only now as a transformed character. And now we're at the final part of the hero's journey change. Hiro is now in the known world, but he wants to go back to his home in Japan, and so the movie ends with Hiro being gone from the known world, and we start back at the beginning of the hero's journey, only now the world has changed thanks to Hiro. I'm actually surprised at how well Hero of the Rails follows the hero's journey, but weirdly enough, it isn't the only Thomas movie to follow this formula. Misty Island also has our character venturing into an unknown world. Something in the mist! Shut the doors! Shut the doors! So Misty Island Rescue starts out in the known world, represented by Sodor, where the Sodor Search and Rescue Center is being built. This is the supernatural aid of the story. To prove Thomas is wrong, Diesel takes the Joby wood from Thomas, and Thomas sees this. This is Thomas's call to adventure. He saves him from falling off an unfinished bridge, and Thomas is rewarded by going to the mainland. While waiting for a ship, Salty tells Thomas about Misty Island and about how an engine went there once and used smoke signals to get saved. Eventually Thomas takes the ship into the unknown, however Thomas gets lost at sea and ends up on Misty Island, which represents the unknown world, a place the protagonist has never been before. On Misty Island, Thomas is tested, he hears weird noises and strange sounds. Often when the hero leaves the unknown world straight away, they're faced with a test, and this is exactly what Thomas faces. Eventually Thomas meets up with Bash Dash and Ferdinand, who represent the mentors in the story. They're the characters who exist in the new world to help Thomas on his journey. But interestingly, Thomas rejects the help from them. This is another common thing in myths where the hero will sometimes reject the call to adventure. Now we move on to the foe. Now, in this section of the 
movie, there is no character who represents the foe. But then again, not every story needs to have the exact beats of the hero's journey. Some stories don't have mentors, some stories don't have foes. You could argue that the foe is the situation itself. The fact that Thomas is trapped in this island and has no help could be the conflict or the foe within itself of the story. That's why we don't need a foe in this section. This leads us to the realization of the movie, where Thomas realizes that he needs help from the logging locos, and so he returns to them. This is also the part of Thomas's fundamental arc of the movie, about learning from other characters and listening to their advice. The treasure, interestingly enough, is represented by the Joby Wood. This is the tool or item the protagonist needs at the end of the film. So now that Thomas has the treasure, it's time to go. And them going to Misty Island to Sodor represents that let's go montage of the movie. However, on his journey back to the known world, Thomas fails because he hasn't been listening to the other characters. It's only now that he uses his advice he got from Salty at the start of the journey by using the smoke signals. And when Whiff and Percy come to find Thomas, he asks Whiff what to do and how to break through the tunnel. This is Thomas's redemption in the story. There's even symbolism of Thomas being enlightened with Thomas being in the darkness of the tunnel, but then a hole opens up above him and it sort of acts as symbolism for enlightenment, the way the light shines on Thomas. After the redemption, Thomas returns to the known world, but as a changed character. This change is represented by the Soder Search and Rescue Center, where at the beginning of the film, it was unfinished, but thanks to the treasure that Thomas discovered in the unknown world, the Soder Search and Rescue Center can now be rebuilt. And yeah, that's the hero's journey of Misty Island. It works surprisingly well. Now, I've been talking a lot about Thomas up to this point, which makes sense since he's the protagonist of most specials, but the next hero's journey isn't actually about him. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Day of the Diesel starts out in the known world, represented by Sodor. However, a barren shed is on fire. This is the inciting incident or the supernatural aid of the story. Belle, a new fire engine on Sodor, puts out the fire and her and Thomas start hanging out more, leaving Percy sad and resentful. However, Diesel starts telling Percy about his friends at the Diesel Works. So Diesel, again, represents the call to adventure, only in this case it's Percy getting the call. And just before Percy enters into the unknown world, we get the symbolism of two pathways, one leading to the rescue center the known world, and one leading to the diesel works, the unknown world. So Percy ventures into the unknown world, symbolized by the diesel works. Once at the diesel works, Percy meets Diesel 10. Now Diesel 10 in this story is the mentor to Percy, which is super interesting, but it does make sense since Percy was feeling rejected by the others and Diesel 10 takes full advantage of that. This is where the diesel start to test Percy. At first it's a small test, asking for Kevin, then it's a bigger test, asking to bring Thomas, and before you know it, Percy is leading the charge of the Diesels. I think it's pretty clear that the Diesels are the foes in this section. It's only when Percy is at the Steamworks that he realizes what he's done. This is where Percy has his revelation that he was wrong to trust the Diesels. The next step is the treasure, which is represented by Kevin at the Diesel Works. So Percy and Thomas bring the treasure, represented by Kevin, back to the Steamworks. This is the Let's Go montage, where we see all of the steam engines coming together to take back the Steamworks. The next step is failure, which in this context is the Diesels and the steam engines failing to make amends. However, the Fat Controller shows up and this is where the redemption happens, where the Diesels and the steam engines are redeemed and rebuilt the Steamworks together. And then we get the return, where Thomas and Percy return as friends, only now as changed characters. I really like the day of the Diesel shook up the formula by having Percy be the hero. He's fallen in the water! Blue Mountain Mystery also follows the hero's journey quite well. What's interesting about the opening is it actually starts out in the unknown world. The prologue is used very effectively where we don't even meet our protagonist, we just jump straight into the supernatural aid. The movie itself starts on Thomas's branch line in the known world. After Paxton's crash, the Fat Controller tells Thomas to work in his place at the Blue Mountain Quarry. This is Thomas's call to adventure. So Thomas goes into the unknown world, represented by the Blue Mountain Quarry. Slight side note here, but I love how Thomas and Luke are like a yin and yang to each other, where Thomas is blue and comes from the green countryside. Luke is green, but lives at the Blue Mountain Quarry. A very nice yin and yang sort of dynamic going on there. Anyway, so as soon as Thomas enters the unknown world, the first thing that happens to him is that he's tested. In fact, there's even a whole song dedicated to his test. Now, the mentor is obviously Luke. He is this mysterious engine who hides a dark secret. Thomas wants to learn what it is and tries to help him. Now the foe is very obviously Diesel, and Paxton to an extent, and the revelation in the story is that Luke tells Thomas about how he bumped the yellow engine to sea. This revelation changes Thomas's objective in the story. From here on out, he wants to learn about this yellow engine, which leads him to the next point, the treasure, which is, you guessed it, the yellow engine, aka Victor. Thomas finds the treasure in the form of Victor, 
and returns to the quarry to tell Luke about the yellow engine. But they're all upset about Thomas for talking about the secret and they run away. This is the let's go sequence or the chase scene part of the movie. Thomas chases after them but he ends up hanging on the edge of the cliff. This is where Thomas fails. But what's interesting is that Thomas doesn't actually get the redemption in the story. It's Luke who gets the redemption. Thomas is hanging on the edge of the cliff and Luke rushes over to save him. You even have this thing where Diesel is teasing Thomas and Luke saying that he's going to push him off just like he did with the yellow engine. But then Luke manages to save Thomas. It's not just powerful because Luke saved Thomas. It's doubly powerful because Luke actually made up for the mistake all those years ago. Luke proved in front of everyone that he wasn't a bad engine. That's what makes this scene so powerful because it's the redemption of his character. It's the thing that he's been running away from for the whole movie and finally proving that he's not that. And after the redemption, we get the return where Luke and Victor meet up for the first time since that crash. And it's here that Victor explains that it was an accident. And the final stage is change where Luke can now exist in the Blue Mountain Quarry but he no longer has to hide away. And that's pretty much the hero's journey of Blue Mountain Mystery. Godred was our number one, and named after a king, Caldy replied. Now the next hero's journey is a little more messy, since King of the Railway has multiple plot lines going all over the place, but I think I've distilled it down to one hero's journey, so we'll start with that. So as always, we start in the known world, which is represented by Sodor. Thomas and Percy break a crate at the docks, which has a suit of armour in it. This is the supernatural aid. Then we get the call to adventure, which is represented by Sir Robert Normby coming to the island. Thomas, along with the aid, goes up into the castle, which is represented by the unknown world. Once in the unknown world, we have this test. In this case, the test is James, Thomas and Percy having to work together to pull the goods train. We're then introduced to the mentor. In this case, the mentor is represented by Stephen. Stephen is repaired and goes looking for a job where he meets up with Diesel and Paxton who represent the foes in the story. Stephen goes looking for a job but eventually Stephen has this realization that he's too old to work in the modern world. This realization causes Stephen to get lost in a mine which is symbolism of the cave of despair. Often after a devastating realization the protagonist is thrown into an unknown cave or pit of despair. However it's in this cave that the protagonist will also find the treasure. In this case the treasure that Stephen finds is King Godred's lost crown. This leads to the next segment, the let's go montage, where everyone starts looking for the lost mentor. Eventually Stephen is found and Thomas tells Stephen about his important job. This is where Stephen emerges from the cave of despair, a changed character, but not before the fail, which is represented by the bridge collapsing, but Thomas manages to pull Stephen back just in time. Stephen and Thomas then return to the castle only as changed characters, which is represented by Stephen's new funnel and the castle being restored. So yeah, despite the movie being incredibly messy and shifting protagonists a lot, there is one somewhat consistent character journey throughout. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Now on to Tale of the Brave. So, we start off in the known world with Thomas, where he's going to work at the clay pits. However, in the clay pits, Thomas discovers a footprint inside the rock slide during a storm. This is the supernatural aid. Thomas tells Percy about the footprints and tries to figure out where they came from. This is Percy's call to adventure. This is where Percy goes into the unknown world. Now, you can argue that the unknown world is the clay pits, but I prefer to see the unknown in Tale of the Brave as fear itself. Percy not knowing how to be brave is the unknown thing that he has to conquer in the movie. So Percy goes into the unknown and he gets tested. He starts seeing things like monsters in ordinary things. One of the monsters turns out to be the mentor in the form of Gator. Through Gator, Percy starts to overcome his fears and he starts to turn a new leaf. However, James, who represents the foe, becomes resentful of Percy and Gator, and using this scrap monster, he tricks Percy into thinking that monsters are real. This is where Percy has his realization, where he realizes that he has to go and prove that he can, in fact, be brave. This is where we get the treasure. In this case, the treasure is the monster that Percy tries to find at the clay pits. After Percy leaves to go and find the treasure, this is where we get a huge action set piece. This whole montage of the movie is the let's go part of the movie. However, during the search, James actually finds what he thinks is the monster, and gets scared and he gets caught in a landslide. This is the fail part of the story. Percy then sees this fail happen and this is where Percy has his redemption as a character, where he goes into the rock slide being brave and saves James. At the beginning of the unknown he was really scared, but by the end he had the redemption proving that he can be brave, aka his tale of the brave. Percy returns to the known world, only now he's a changed character, and even though he's still scared, he still has the bravery to say goodbye to Gator. He is truly a changed character. And that's the tale of the brave hero's journey. Percy has a remarkable hero's journey in this movie, definitely a step up from his Daily Diesel ones. Here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. 
These stories tell you how he did it. Now, I wasn't actually planning to apply the hero's journey to The Adventure Begins, since it is just an adaption of the Railway series, but I figured, why not give it a shot? So, let's try this out. The movie starts in the Unknown World, where Edward is a shunter in the yard, and Thomas is nowhere to be seen. Edward essentially functions as the main protagonist before Thomas is introduced. Now, the supernatural aid is represented by Gordon, who shows up to be this pompous, rude character. This is where Edward gets his call to adventure, where he goes to help Gordon up the hill. And it's after this that we're introduced to Thomas. Now, what's interesting about the Unknown World is actually represented by Thomas himself. Because the Unknown doesn't necessarily have to be a new world, it can just be something as simple as a new character coming into a place. So in this case, Thomas is the unknown world. This is also where we get a shift of protagonists from Edward to Thomas. The next step is the test, which is Thomas's first day where he keeps messing up and he keeps screwing up inside the yard. There's even a song dedicated to it. The next is the meeting of the mentor, which is, you know, pretty obviously Edward, who acts as Thomas's guide throughout the story. Now the foe is represented by Gordon, where to pay Thomas back for whistling at him, he pulls him along the main line. And it's only after this experience that Thomas has his revelation about wanting to leave the shunting yard and see the world. After this is where Thomas meets the treasure. The treasure in this case is represented by Judy and Jerome. The treasure is the thing that Thomas will need for his redemption. Now what's interesting about the next few beats of the story is that it sort of repeats itself, which is totally fine. I think this is just a consequence of the stories being adapted from other stories, so it sort of makes sense that it will repeat itself. Thomas wants to pull a passenger train, so he goes. However, he fails to pull the passenger train, and so he he makes up for it by going to take some trucks, which again fails, after which he repents again. Then Thomas sees a runaway James, so he goes after him, but fails. However, using the treasure, aka Judy and Jerome, he's able to redeem himself. And Thomas then returns to the shunting yard, where he first met him, only now he has a branch line and is a changed character. And that is the hero's journey. Despite it repeating itself a few times, the adventure begins just somewhat follow the hero's journey. Although, as I said, this probably had to do with the fact that there was multiple stories being sort of shoved into one, hence why it repeated itself a few times. A pirate's map showing the way to hidden treasure! Now what's interesting about Legend of the Lost Treasure is that it sort of feels like a spiritual continuation of The Adventure Begins. This is a movie all about Thomas showing how he became number one, with the movie literally ending with Glynn telling Thomas to look after the branch line and wear the number one with pride. And in Legend of the Lost Treasure, we actually see Thomas be tested over that. So in Legend of the Lost Treasure, we start out in the known world, represented by Thomas's branch line, which parallels the end of The Adventure Begins. And in the opening, it's established about the new branch line being built, but Thomas brushes off saying that his branch line is the most important thing that'll ever exist. This is essentially Thomas's refusal to the call of the adventure, which makes sense since his branch line and his number one are the most important things to him. But this is Thomas's fundamental flaw as a character. This is exactly why he needs to embark on this hero's journey. Like the end of Adventure Begins implies, he's still cheeky and still needs to grow. So Thomas causes a crash at Knapford Station. This is Thomas's supernatural aid, where he was being cheeky, yes, but he took the joke too far and caused a huge crash. Thomas is then sent away by the Fat Controller to the new branch just as Ryan shows up. This is Thomas's call to adventure. Thomas then goes into the Unknown World, which is represented by the Harwick branch line. The first thing that happens to Thomas in the Unknown World is that he gets tested. This test is represented by Rail's first ballast after. However, Thomas fails this test and ends up in the Cave of Despair, represented by the cavern. However, it's in this pit of despair that Thomas discovers something about himself. In this case, it's the pirate ship and the map. This leads Thomas to the Mentor. Now, what's interesting about Skiff and Sailor John is that they both represent the mentor and the foe. They're both good and they're both bad. After being rejected by everyone else, Thomas is taken advantage of, and after the dynamite chase, this leads Thomas to the realization that he is no longer number one. Now we move on to the treasure, the treasure in this case being the literal treasure in the movie. However, both Sailor John and Thomas fall out over what to do with it. This leads to the let's go part of the story, where Thomas chases after Sailor John to get the treasure back. However, Thomas fails. He tries his hardest, but he still wasn't quick enough to get the treasure back. And this is where we get the redemption, where Skiff, who finally has had enough of the abuse and overthrows Sailor John, and throws him and the treasure into the sea, Thomas then returns to the known world, as symbolized by him pulling Annie and Clarabel, like he did at the start of the movie, and having his number one, which again was his main arc of the movie. And the change of the movie is symbolized here by Skiff, showing him have a branch line just like Thomas. A very sweet parallel, and a very good way to wrap up the hero's journey. So, that was the hero's journey of lost treasure, but the great race also has a hero's journey of itself as well. Let's have a race, have a race, have a race, let's see who is the quickest.
The Great Race starts off in the known world, represented by Sodor. Thomas meets the Flying Scotsman, Vickerstown, where he tells him all about the Great Railway Show. This is Thomas's supernatural aid. Thomas really wants to go to the Great Railway Show so much that he starts singing about it. This is Thomas's I Want song. Think of Moana's How Far I'll Go or Quasimodo's Out There song. It's a song that the main character sings about a want. Hell, the opening lyric of the song even has I want in it. This represents Thomas's want or call to adventure. Thomas then enters into the unknown world. Now, as I said before, the unknown world doesn't necessarily have to represent a new place. It can be just as simple as something new showing up. The unknown world is represented by the great railway show engines leaving on the ferry. And Thomas meets Ashima. This is the unknown. It's only after meeting Meeting them that Thomas wants to get repainted and so he tests himself over and over again which represents the test. After this Thomas meets up with Ashima and Ashima becomes the mentor of the story. Thomas learns about the shunting competition from the mentor but it's because of the foe who's represented by Diesel that he can't go. This is where Thomas has his realization that he can't go to the railway show and everyone else leaves without him. However this is where we get the treasure. In this case the treasure is represented by Gordon's safety valve, the thing that Thomas needed to go to the great railway show. So Thomas races is off to the Great Railway Show. This is the let's go part of the movie. However, Thomas fails and Gordon still blows up. This is the part of the story where Thomas fails. However, Thomas competes in the shunting competition and wins a trophy for Sodor. This is Thomas's redemption as a character. Thomas and the others then return to Sodor, the known world, only now Thomas is a changed character. We even see him at Vickerstown, which parallels where he first got the call to adventure. And yeah, that's the hero's journey of the Great Race. Toto? We're not in Kansas anymore. Now what I love about Journey Beyond Sodor is that it follows the hero's journey remarkably well. It even has journey in the title. Once again, our story begins in the known world, represented by Sodor. Henry is pulling a goods train to the mainland where it crashes. This is the supernatural aid. Meanwhile, Thomas is on his branch line. Thomas is annoyed with James, saying that he's the best. This is Thomas's call to adventure. So he takes James's goods train and goes into the unknown world, represented by the mainland. The first character Thomas encounters in the unknown world is Barry who represents the test. The next step is meeting the mentors, and in this case, the mentors represent the experimental engines. After meeting the mentors, Thomas meets up with the foe, or rather foes in this case, represented by Frankie and Hurricane. They trap Thomas inside the steelworks. This leads Thomas to the revelation that he was wrong to leave his friends on Sodor. So Thomas manages to escape the steelworks and gets cast back out into the unknown world. However, James becomes captive by Frankie and Hurricane. So the treasure that Thomas now needs to get in order to win is James at the steelworks. This is the let's go part of the movie, where Thomas and the experimental engines try to get James back from the steelworks. However, they fail and Hurricane's wheels start to melt. This is where we get the redemption. Frankie and Hurricane admit that there's too much work, but the experimental engines are more than willing to help them out. Thomas and James then return to the known world, only now they are changed characters from where they started at the beginning. And that's the hero's journey of Journey Beyond Sodor. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. Now I've talked a lot about characters entering into unknown worlds, but Big World Adventures literally has Thomas going to see the new world. So the movie, surprise surprise, starts out in the known world, which is Thomas in the shunting yard. Apparently the whole idea of Big World Adventures came from that that one line of Thomas's introduction about wanting to leave the shunting yard and see the world. The supernatural aid of the story is Ace coming to Sodor. He tells Thomas about wanting to go see the world, and this is Thomas's call to adventure to go into the unknown. So Thomas goes into the unknown world, and this is even symbolized by him being enlightened. I've always loved this shot, it's almost like him being reborn. Thomas then has to pull a very long line of truck. This is Thomas's test, however the test becomes too much, and this is where he meets the mentor, represented by Nia. But Thomas spends the next few acts the movie rejecting her, whilst trying to chase after Ace, who represents the foe. Ace and Nia essentially represent the devil and the angel on Thomas's shoulders, or in a Freudian sense, the id, the ego, and the superego. And the majority of the movie is about this dynamic between whether Thomas will pick Ace or he will pick Nia. Thomas listens to Ace about abandoning Nia, but then he regrets it. This is Thomas's realization that he was wrong to abandon her. Now the treasure in the story is Young Bao. He helps Thomas find Nia and saves them both in the end. I also like to point out that Young Bao's name name literally means brave treasure, so it makes his purpose in the story all the more funny. This is where we get the let's go montage where we see Thomas
Thomas racing through the Rainbow Mountains to find Nia. Eventually he finds Nia and apologizes, but a huge avalanche comes down and Thomas and Nia both end up hanging on the edge of a cliff. This is the failure part of the story, but then the redemption, where young Bao bravely saves them both, again being the brave treasure he is, and Thomas and Nia return to the known world, represented by Sodor, and Nia becomes a Sodor resident, representing the change in the known world. And that's the hero's journey of Big World Adventures. So now that we've talked about the main CGI specials, let's go over the model series movies and see how well they track with the hero's journey. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Fuck yeah! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Woo! Now I'll be honest with you, the reason I didn't open this video with Magic Railroad was because I was kind of putting off the movie. <laughs> um, but let's give it a try. So, the movie starts out in the known world, represented by Sodor. The supernatural aid is the magic gold dust supply running out. Meanwhile, an evil diesel is looking to rid Sodor of steam engines. Because of this, Mr. Conductor enters into the unknown world, where he's put in charge of the railway. This is the test. Mr. Conductor gets a call from the Fat Controller, who represents the Mentor. Mr. Conductor then goes looking for the magic, but ends up meeting the foe, who's Diesel 10. Eventually, he ends up at the windmill, where he realizes that he needs to go into the magic railroad. This campfire scene is the realization of the story. So Thomas goes into the Magic Railroad with Lily, where he tries to find Lady, Lady being the treasure they need to restore the Magic Railroad with, and soon Lady is steamed up. This is where we get the let's go montage of Lady and Thomas racing back to the wishing well. However, Diesel 10 finds them, which is the failure part of the story. Thomas and Lady race away from him, and this is where we get the redemption, where Thomas manages to cause the bridge to collapse, and Diesel 10 falls to his demise. Lady and Thomas return to the wishing well, only now the Magic shavings change and the magic is restored. And yeah, that's the hero's journey of Magic Railroad. Because there's so many different protagonists in Magic Railroad, I feel like there's multiple hero's journeys you could track throughout the movie. Like, you have Mr. Conductor going to the unknown world, but then you also have Lily going to meet her granddad, but then you also have Thomas going into Magic Railroad, so there's really loads of ways you could read the hero's journey in that movie. But this is the way that I personally read it. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Now, I wasn't really planning to make a hero journey on calling all engines since it's, can you even count it as a movie but after thinking about it I think there is a kind of general through line that you can follow we start again on Sodor in the known world more holiday makers are coming to the island and an airport is being built this is the supernatural aid however the diesels are being mean to the steam engines this is Thomas's call to adventure to play a trick on diesel it goes wrong and Thomas and the engines are cast out into the unknown world represented by the shed being destroyed and them having to live in the unknown place as soon as they go into the unknown known, a storm comes to the island, which is represented by the test that the engines have to go through. It's here that Thomas meets the Mentor. In this case, the Mentor is represented by Emily, and the foe that Thomas has to encounter is represented by the Diesels. After meeting with the foes, this is where we get the revelation. This is represented by all the engines having dreams about their future, and it's here that Thomas dreams of Lady and Rusty working together. Thomas sees the answer coming to him in a dream, and so Thomas awakes from the dream, and he realizes he has to work together with the Diesels. So he goes and finds the treasure, in this case being Mavis, a common middle ground diesel that Thomas finds to try to unite them. After that, we get the Let's Go montage, where all the diesels and steam engines come together to rebuild the airport. However, Thomas is coming along with a goods train and causes the tower to collapse, and this means the planes can't land on the runway. This is the failure part of the special, so to redeem himself, Thomas goes to find Diesel 10 and asks if he can help. This represents Thomas's redemption as a character. Thomas and Diesel 10 then return to the known world, only now the steamies and diesels are able to work together and finish the airport. This is the change of the special, which is also represented by the new shed being built and Emily joined the new Steam Team. And that's the hero's journey of Calling All Engines. To be honest, I never really thought about a hero's journey for Calling All Engines, but it does kind of work in a weird way. But it's our town. Now the last model special is The Great Discovery, and in my opinion has a fantastic hero's journey. So, we start out in a known world, represented by Sodor. Thomas and James are racing, and whoever gets there first gets the special job. This is the spiritual aid that Thomas needs. Thomas is then asked to pull logs, where Duncan tells him about an alternate path that he can take. This is Thomas's call to adventure. So Thomas goes into the unknown woods, where he finds Grey Waterton, which is Thomas going into the unknown world. The town is then restored, and 
Thomas is put in charge of the project. This is Thomas's test. However, Stanley shows up, who represents the mentor character. He's a slightly better version of Thomas. And despite him being the mentor, Thomas views Stanley as a foe. So much so that he plays a trick on him, which goes too far. It's because of this that the other engines reject Thomas, which leads Thomas to the revelation that he has to change. So Thomas goes to work in the middle of the night, where he shunts a truck too hard, and it goes running into a mine. The truck that Thomas chases after is the treasure that he's trying to get. This whole montage of Thomas being in the cave is symbolism for death and rebirth. The hero will sometimes die around this point, and this is represented by all the others wondering where Thomas is, the dead protagonist. We even get symbolism of Thomas being reborn. This is symbolized by him going through a narrow hole and being reborn into the known world. This is a literal parallel to a character being born. This is the let's go part of the movie. Thomas is found by Stanley and he's saved, but then Stanley breaks down. This is the failure part of the story. But then, this is where Thomas has his redemption as a character and shunts Stanley back to Grey Waterton. Stanley and Thomas return to the known world, only now as changed characters. And this change is represented by the town being finished. And yeah, that's the hero's journey of the Great Discovery. Out of all of the movies on the list, I think this is the one that follows the hero's journey the closest. Okay, now, I said I was only going to cover the movies, but I did just want to talk about the Royal Engine one last time. Yes, 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 I know I've talked about it at least a hundred times by now, but just allow me to talk about the hero's journey in one last time, okay? So, for one final time... I am honoured to inform you that Her Majesty the Queen herself is coming here to visit us. The Royal Engine starts off in the known world, represented by Sodor. The Fat Controller receives a letter to go to Hogwarts. I, I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> London. This is the supernatural aid of the story. Thomas is then told that he is the one to bring the Fat Controller to London. This is Thomas's call to adventure. So Thomas and Topham go into the unknown world represented by the mainland, and the first character that Thomas meets is Beresford, who picks him up again. This is the test. However, after the test, Thomas meets Duchess, who represents the mentor character, a character who is more familiar with this unknown world. Now, what's interesting about the Royal Engine is that there is no foe. Like I said before, not every character needs to have a foe in a story. So, not every, not every story needs to have a mentor, not every story needs to have a foe. So, it's okay for certain stories to skip over certain beats. So the revelation in the story is that they need to go to London at a certain time. So they leave and rush off without the fireman. And in this case, the fireman is the treasure that Thomas needs. So the Fat Controller has to become the treasure or the fireman. This is where we get the Let's Go montage, represented by the montage of Thomas and Topham going to London. However, this leads to the failure. In this case, the failure is Duchess's safety valve. It's only after this failure that Thomas has his redemption and shunts Duchess all the way to London. London. Thomas returns to the station very similar to the one he started off at, only now he's a changed character, which is represented by the crest that he gets from the Queen. And yeah, that's the hero's journey of the Royal Engine. So now that we've gone through every Thomas special, we need to answer the question, is every Thomas special the same? Well, the simple answer is no, of course not. But I still think it's fun to see the weird parallels that happen inside the movies. The hero's journey is a cyclic journey of personal transformation, where you constantly are faced with challenges and resistance. It's going to be hard. Challenging yourself and facing yourself can be one of the most challenging things you'll ever do in your life. But it's the only way for personal transformation in a meaningful, positive way, and will make a huge impact on yourself and the others in your lives. And it all starts with you answering the call to adventure, facing your fears, and walking your path of self discovery and living your true self. So what are you waiting for? Your adventure is about to begin. All you have to do is answer the call. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you all in the next one. Slána